What's happening people? Welcome to another episode of the Flex and Rant Show. It feels like a little while man, the games have been coming thick and fast. We haven't um, had our normal schedule but we've done the live show last week which you yeah. guys are feeling that was brilliant. And we're back now man, like, rants. Obviously we've got a lot to get through in this show, a lot. Yeah, but, yeah, how you feeling? I don't know, feeling like most people, did not it? Like, just pretty uninspired. To be honest, you know, like Maureen's up to his usual piss boiling. Do you know what I mean? And it's just, it's getting silly now. Mm. It, it, we're definitely the banner club at the moment. People are laughing at us, and it's not even about just because they're laughing at us. We care because we care. It's almost like you don't really care about what rival fans think. It's got to the point where I've seen a lot of people on Twitter who said, "It's I've backed Marina the whole way. I might have taken longer than others, but now is my time. My tipping points have gone." We were there at the West Ham game. Obviously, yeah. you guys have all seen the West Ham game. I'm pretty sure all of you have anyway. That was inexcusable. That performance, that the tactics, the way we set out, everything about that was just unexplainable. You man saw it, innit? We set up to not lose against West Ham, bruv. M- mayonnaise at centre-back, bruv. Dead baller, bruv. Like, bland, mayonnaise sandwich football, blood. I'm telling you, that is him. We played three defensive midfielders against West Ham United. That is inexcusable for any manager. And you're still sticking by what you're saying, like, because of, not just because of that, because you've been saying it for ages, but he needs to go now, now. He needs to go. He set up like he was managing Bolton Wanderers, fam. That's how, that's how he set up. Like he was Big Sam in the, yeah. mid, in the mid-millennium. Yeah, like he was <laughs> like, yeah, Champagne Allardyce. Remember, I told you, man, the Champagne Allardyce, that's what he is, the posh pulis, man. That's what he is. Three defensive midfielders against West Ham United at the Olympic Stadium. That is an embarrassment. I'm saying when the guy's like no one's bigger than the club this that and the other exactly so respect the heritage of the club how are you playing that kind of football as a Manchester United manager and being able to sleep at night I couldn't believe it I, I honestly couldn't believe it before the game even when I met you at the game I said I tweeted out I'm going to ignore the fact that McTominay's starting and just be happy that Martial is up front etc and then 10 minutes later I just kept looking at the midfield you know when you see it on Twitter and you just, I'm just like hang on a minute how are we supposed to move this ball quickly? How are we supposed to... Oh. Like, this isn't Barcelona away in the semi-finals of the Champions League. This isn't Real Madrid. This isn't Chelsea away where you're trying to implement a game plan. This is West Ham that can't buy a point, you know? And you know what kills me? I said it before the game and everyone was like, oh, why are you being so negative? Why don't you wait? I know the dynamics of football, yeah? People are like, oh, it's a 4-4-2 diamond. No, it's not. Jose played the same formation he played against Spurs. Except Herrera dropped into centre back. This time it was mayonnaise, blood. That's what it was. <laughs> Bro, listen, yeah? It was a joke. How can you have three defensive midfielders, not one ball player? As I said, the man you're at, yeah, is McTominay, yeah, with chocolate sprinkles. He's a basic footballer, he's a water carrier. He's slow and he doesn't he doesn't release the ball quickly and he very rarely passes forward. And we're talking you know? about him, yeah. Then you see Jose Mourinho come out in the press conference afterwards and say, you guys have wanted me to play Martial for so long, I did. His defensive duties were bad, etc. McTominay, the kid is great. Every pass he made was accurate. This is what we need in the squad, sort of thing. Like, surely, like, if he's, if, if Mourinho is this whole thing that people are saying he is, like, he's a proven winner and knows everything, what he's doing and all this, how could you possibly look at McTominay's performance, who was at fault for two goals, yep. and say that the guy had a good game. Like, you are trying to piss off the fans and trying to draw people like Martial out, like Pogba, or like the attacking players who weren't in the team, like Eric Bayer, who's a centre-half, who's had to watch a young central midfielder play in his position, like Lindelof, who's been taken off while McTominay slotted into his position. Like, I don't understand it. Like, he must have been trying to literally piss people off. That's the only explanation I can have for that. Bro, Maureen's got dementia, fam. I told you lot, yeah? Here, this is what he does. Like, we've got, we've got, like, our basketball team, yeah? Fellaini, Matic, Lukaku, McMayonnaise, fam. Matic. And Smalling, yeah. That, that's our basketball team that Jose likes. The yes men, the big, the big guys. McTominay is in the team, Jose is going to come in and say, yeah, I do play you, I brought through McTominay. McTominay is his trump card. That's mm. why he likes him, because he can say, yeah, I promoted you. Mm. McTominay is one of the crappiest players he could have brought through. We've got men like Gomez, you know what I mean? We've got Greenwood, we've got Chong, we've got these guys. Why are they not getting a look in? Because but they, they play with flair and attacking. Bro, even Andreas Pereira couldn't get a game against Derby, and he was our best player in pre-season. He wasn't even in the squad. Only Paul Pogba is the only other player in the squad that can put the ball in the top corner from free kick from 20 yards out. 
and the guy didn't even make the bench against Derby County. This is this is Maureen, bruv. This is what we have. And then he had the cheek to say that Martial um, doesn't like his defensive duties and trying to throw Martial over the bus, under the bus. He said, you lot were saying Sanchez weren't playing well, so I dropped Sanchez and I gave Martial a chance, but he don't like defending. That's the same thing he said about Eden Hazard, and I posted the exact quote the time when he was having a meltdown at Chelsea. He said the same thing about Hazard. Why does Martial need to defend? Because one, he was playing up front, and two, he had eight defenders behind him, but Maureen's still talking about defending first. And then you look at Sarri here, who is the exact opposite. He's talking about Eden Hazard scoring more goals because that's what attackers do, attackers attack. But Mourinho wants his attackers to defend. The guy's a dinosaur, I told you. Maureen the dinosaur, fossil football, bro. Dead and buried, extinct. Done out here, fam. Gone, lad. If we're looking at how to replace him, who with, yes, obviously Zidane is, is being talked about loads. And I know you, you're all for him coming. And I've seen a lot of people on social media all for him coming, a lot of people who are not. Yeah. There is an argument though, that say we sacked him today, now, on the spot, and brought in someone like that, that there's no guarantees. Like, we don't have the same squad as Real Madrid, yep. but has he shown you enough to warrant taking on our club in this current state? And how do we know we're not going to be in another situation like this three years down the line? if these same players decide not to play for Zidane or that something starts going wrong? That won't happen. That won't happen. How do you know? Because Jose is a knobhead. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> no. Bro, listen. No, <laughs> listen, yeah? You see this guy? This you, got, guy you gotta is, give him better. You can't bro, just say because Jose is a knobhead. He's a proven knobhead, bro. Everywhere he goes, he boils piss, innit? They, like, the players at Real Madrid didn't want Zidane to leave, bro. Mm. They didn't want him to leave. They love him. The guy's got respect. He's one of the top five footballers ever to grace, grace the green. He, he, the guy is respected all over the world. Just, just his presence alone is different. And the reason why I say that he fits the profile for what our club need is because obviously we, we're not going to change our owners anytime soon. So you have to, you have to just be at peace with the fact that these guys are about them. Ain't that a bigger problem though? Because that before you was going to finish that, no, I was no, going to no, go no, on no. to that. I, it is and it isn't. Because if, it, if we still have the same structure, yeah, no but the director of football changing, that they want to do. The structure is changing. They're talking about director of football. Mm. This talk has this never been at the club. The fact that there's talk of this means that it's happening. That means they realise that actually, it's taken a while, but they realise that Liverpool, Man City, these men are ahead of us. And now they're thinking, you know what, maybe we do need a reshuffle. They've been thinking about it because all this noise wouldn't be coming out of nowhere because there was no talk of a director of football under Moisel van Gaal. So that means people, they, like the pennies drop somewhere, innit? So these men, they're not football people, but they're not stupid. They know that the longer we're not winning for and we're not playing attractive football, it will affect our money at some point. Mm. So that's what they're thinking. And about. that's really when they kick into yeah, gear, exactly. innit? Because they're all about their money. So when they're thinking about their money, they're thinking Zidane, profile wise, he's the biggest manager on the planet right now. No one's got a bigger profile than him. Pep, Pep was, was a water carrier. Pep weren't an amazing footballer. Do you know what I mean? Pep um, earned his corn. At, at Barcelona and built his reputation, but Zidane came into the game with the biggest reputation. What manager's got a bigger rep than Zidane? He's won three Champions Leagues, three, with the same squad that Rafa Benitez had, bro. Mm. And he and he didn't spend no money. Mm. So my man are like, yeah, but he had a great squad. Well, Rafa didn't do nothing with that squad. So it's not just about having good players. As mm. I said, what did the Galacticos win for all the players that they had? Yeah, they didn't win, the they didn't win yeah, nothing. Yeah. Nothing. David Beckham had to wait for his last season to win some silverware. Mm. So. You have to realise that just having good players is not enough. Mm. Zidane's a pragmatic manager. He's shown that he will tactically change things. He played a 4-4-2 diamond at Real Madrid. You know what I mean? And they never played that. Mm. I also was listening to um, the, the Spanish expert, what's his name, Graham Hunter, I think his name yeah, is. And yeah. he was saying that um, what he did was, was fantastic man management of Cristiano Ronaldo. Because at the time when Ronaldo obviously felt that he needed to play every game, yeah. He made him sit back and took him out of some games, rested him and showed him that he needed to look after himself in a different way later on in his career. And the back end of the seasons, he was coming up trumps with goals in the back in you know, Champions League. And he was saying that those are some of the pros of having someone like Zidane. Bro, no other manager in the world is telling Cristiano Ronaldo to sit down on the bench and he's listening, bro. Zidane commands respect because of what he's achieved in the game. And as a footballer, you're not going to respect anyone more than a man that you've seen do it at the highest level. You see what I'm saying? Like the respect that guys have for Zidane. 
Do you think that you can control egos like the Ramoses, the Ronaldos, and all that? Mm. If you're not a big guy like Zizou, they run these managers but out. But although Jose wasn't a player, as a manager, he has he has the yeah, but it doesn't matter the clout. He has the history of trophies that he's won. Why does the players not bought into him then? That doesn't that show that sometimes that's not enough? No. What have you done for me lately, bro? Jose ain't done nothing, innit? And the thing is, Jose is a divisive character. Like you love him or you hate him. Do you know what I'm saying? And that's what it is. And that's why, as much as like Pep jars me as a manager. Mm -hmm. The people that you hear come out talking shit about Pep compared to shit about Jose. It's few and far between, do you know what I mean? Zlatan can't stand Pep Guardiola, but he loves Jose. But on the whole, you don't get players coming out slagging Pep Guardiola of the way that Jose gets talked about by nearly everyone. Do you know what I'm saying? So, it's just one of them things where Jose, if he loves you, he loves you. And if he doesn't like you, he makes things personal. Do you know what I mean? Pep Guardiola will drop you because you don't suit the system. Like, Jose will create an agenda. And that's what he's done with a lot of players. So the fact that look, it's nothing to do with this whole perceived Martial FC nonsense, but you can clearly see that he's trying to single out certain players. Like to, uh, for me, after that game where everyone was poor and uh, Martial tried a couple of things, was the only one Bro, trying. What did Lukaku one do in that game? Didn't what mention did he do his in that name game? once. What did he do in that game? Because he doesn't do shit for us most games, isn't it? Like, I mean, his second touch, yeah. It's it, a tackle. No, not even a tackle, <laughs> blood. He's just closing down thin air, blood. Do you know what I'm saying? Pressing like, by himself to just try. I'm telling yeah. you, if Lukaku had to, to had to chase his touches, but we'd cover the most ground on the pitch. I'm telling you. <laughs> but it's a fact. I mean, Martial was dropping deep, picking up the ball, trying to do stuff. Trying to come on the half turn. He won, the, he won the corner that we scored from. And he skated past three guys in a little tight corner. Mm. Like he was trying to make things happen. But yeah, Jose. Still, still threw him under the bus and yeah. it's personal with him mm. you see what I'm saying like you just have to think about it like this remember in pre-season Jose was like oh I'm going to be without players because of the World Cup how many City players came home early from their holidays to make sure they were ready for the first game can play to United players it's man management they don't want saying? to come back that's it they're saying Martial went AWOL if, if the manager had a good relationship with Tony mm. he could have just messaged him and said you know what lad we need you come back and he would have came because Pep did that, and they all came back. Mm. Their man were playing, start. First game of the season, their man had their players ready to play. And they had some players that went deep into it. Deep, uh, yeah. man management. That's what it is. Jose has never been good at that. That's why the older, more experienced players, he gets on with, but he don't get on with the younger players. I think, I think with Jose Marina's man management, he tries to apply the same theory to every player. And you know, during my job, I've, I'm in a management position, and I think one of the key, like, attributes to being a good manager is understanding that Everyone's every one of your individual. workforce is an individual. There are some players who you need to tell them straight as it is. You know what? You've been shit. You need to buck your ideas up, or you're not playing for me. Yeah. There's some. Yeah. There's some characters who, do you know what? I believe in your ability. You're not having it your own way. You're gonna play for me still. I believe in you. There's some characters who need that you don't really talk to because yeah. they, they get their head down yeah. and they don't really you know and that's about understand I don't think that he's managed to do that in a very long time we saw that from the fallout from Chelsea he tarnishes all the players with the same brush and then when it backfires it seems to me like well it doesn't seem to me I can see it what he does it's like you said he starts making it personal I don't understand oh, that he's dead food like as I said yeah what I've said a lot about Maureen yeah if you look at um, his transfers when he goes to clubs, he averages in the first season seven signings. Also, Jose is notorious for, for buying players that have played for him before. He had Carvalho at, at um, Porto, at Chelsea, and then he took him to Real Madrid with him. He does it all the time. He, goes, he likes those players he yes, can leave. Yes, because he gets these men that he knows that can do a certain job for him. Because he don't like coaching players. He don't like trying to get people to buy into his way of playing so instead of buying players the younger models that he can mold and that he buys money he already knows knows the job that's why he brought in Matic Matic cost 40 M's Kante cost 25 really, I mean, man paid 40 match. million for a water carrier because he knew that he could do the dead things that he wanted that's what Jose is on he brought Zlatan in at 40 bro because he knew that Zlatan just likes him Zlatan's his guy instead of going for a younger model, or we've got Martial and Rashford, bro. Like, do you know what I mean? You didn't, you didn't really need to do that. Mm. Like, but you did that for the one dead season, bro. And yeah, it was all right. Yeah, but it's for one season. Then you spent 75 million on bloody Lukaku, bro. We could have got a Cardi or any striker 
for 75. There's not a strike on this planet barring Harry Kane who he couldn't have got for 75 million, bro. And At you the time. Yeah, and you decided to go for him. Why? Because you knew what he brought. Because you managed him before. It's a safety thing. He, he doesn't take risks. He's a coward. And you can't have cowards in charge of our club, bro, because we're risk-taking front foot attacking. So club. what, so with the Zidane thing, all right, that's one aspect of it. Yeah. But what other candidates, because I remember at a time before even the Zidane come, and I not know just Zidane, because they're talking about bringing Zidane with Ever in the back Yeah, with Ever in the back room. And I we, think we'll that's talk a about brilliant that. idea. We'll, yeah, we'll definitely go on to that. But before we do, what, like, I remember you saying before, like, it just needs to be someone who plays attacking football, understands what the club's about, bring through the youth, a good coach, a good man manager. Yep. What are some other candidates then that you would throw into the hat? Be honest. No, Zidane's the only one that's available now. Mm. Only one so, okay, so that, okay, then, that so, makes so, sense. So a different though. question is then, if if there were a potential, to, so maybe wait to the season, end of the season, don't give it to Zidane, but Jose goes, yeah. and maybe let Carrick step in and to the end and, and McKenna step into the end of the season, which could be a calamity, but it yeah. could be a route for the season. Zidane's got three Champions Leagues, man. Do you know what I'm saying? Pochettino, yeah, he's a brilliant manager. I like him. I think that he would work very well with our younger players. And at the end of the day, like I was having this discussion before, when people talk about long-term managers, there's no such thing. Football's moved on Bro, from then. But not even moved on. Fergie, Fergie and, um, and Arsene were the only managers that were at top flight clubs for that amount of time. They weren't normally in their own time, let alone now. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Managers that stay long term at clubs, they stay at shit clubs, like mediocre, mm. mid-table teams, like your Everton's, mm. your David Because Morton. they're just happy to be getting yeah. that far with, with, yeah. with that. That's their, that's their level. Sean Dyche can be where he is for the next 10 years, bro, mm. because that man just needs to stay up. Yeah. You see what yeah. I'm saying? So he's reached their objectives, you see, why change? You yeah. see what I'm saying? But when you're at a top team, like you can't judge it the same. Like mm. you have to be constantly achieving or else it's a revolving door policy. Mm. Like the average manager is going to last at a top team for three seasons. And that's how it should be. Mm. And but the problem we've got is if you're going to play the type of football that Jose plays, yeah. it's only ever going to be acceptable for me if you win top honours. Once that style of football does not bring you top honours yeah. and, even, and even the very best clubs, so your Real Madrid, your Barcelonas, and we should try to put ourselves in that category. It's only because of how we've been and, and the structure of the club while we're, while we're not thinking like a big club. But yeah. realistically, we should be in that category of even if you are winning the top honours, let's now critique how you're winning them. Yeah. What type of football are you playing? Because Real Madrid sack managers when they win the Champions League, when they win the, when they win the league, the Copa del Rey, if it ain't good enough for the way they do it. Barcelona, same thing. Like even Bayern to a certain extent. So that just goes to show that if you're not playing the way of the club yeah. and if you've got that structure in place of the identity which we don't right now then you're out yeah but you got to realize they got structure in it mm. united was built like the united that we know at our age was built in the image of the last manager when they say that the, the managers like runs the club the be all and end all that's a very old-fashioned way of doing things do you know what i'm saying and it stayed that way because fergie was there for so long and because of his age so because of that the team was pretty much built in his image only. Like, football's moved on from that. As soon as he left, there should have been a contingency to make sure that the club kept develop developing in a certain direction. It wasn't done. They brought in David Moyes, then they brought in LVG, then they brought in um, um, Bloody Maureen. So, that mm. can't happen anymore. There mm. needs to be a structure. The director of football will bring that structure. There'll be profiles for players. What, uh, order, what order do we, do we go about um, You bring the doing DOF in, in with the manager. Mm at the same time absolutely mm. i'd go as far as letting the manager decide who they want to work with the, the incoming yeah absolutely i'd say yo we, we've got we've got three candidates for the director of football which one do you think mm. boom 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 and then they come in together because it's important to talk about this because i what we don't want to do is is just talk about the immediate problem which is jose yeah but there is so much more wrong with the club yeah, yeah, so yeah, much yeah. more which we're all in agreement with and we yes we always said it was rotten from from the yeah. top down in it like we've never We've never hidden mm. from that fact, but there's certain things we can change and things we can't change. We can't get rid of 11 players and bring in 11, but we can mm. get rid of one manager. Mm. That's comfy. Do you know what I mean? Faria's out the door anyway. Jose might as well bounce too. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? In terms of the owners, we can't get rid of them right now, mm. 
We can't get rid of Ed Woodward right now. And to be fair, as much as people are hating on Ed Woodward, if it wasn't for Ed Woodward, we wouldn't have Pogba, we wouldn't have Martial, we wouldn't have De Gea. Because he pulled a plug on that fax machine. Mm. <laughs> he made sure yeah, that De Gea He was like, yo, this don't add up. What, you want to give man Navas? <laughs> like, and I've got a hundred million pound goalkeeper. What? Nah. Bam, power and that's where And that's where Ed does come into, isn't Ed it? When, is when the figures don't match blood. up. When the money don't add up, he's ruthless. That's mm. why when man are saying Jed, Ed won't sack Jose, mm. From he looked Jose in the eye and said, you're getting no money, Ed will sack him. Yeah. You know the ones? Ed don't care. Ed, have you seen the way Ed stands next to Jose? He taps mm. him on the arm to let him know, yo, <laughs> I'm in charge, you know. Like, that's authority there. I'm, look, like, it's going to cost a lot of money to sack him, but make no mistakes, we got it. <laughs> bruv, that's Didn't exactly the best, spend in the summer, use that money to do it. Brother, maybe that's why they saved the money. For the severance. The package. retirement, the retirement yeah. fund for Jose. Maybe that's why they saved the money. Remember, I tweeted, and you lot can look it up. I said, they're saving the money to give to Zidane. A man laughed at me. Remember, I said mm. it before the season. I said, why haven't they given him no money? We spent like 50 M's or something like that. It was 70 million. They saved that severance package for, for Maureen, bro. I'm telling you, man's going to get his little golf course money and he can go somewhere, do you know what I mean, and take a swing, rude boy. One like, thing one thing I want to talk about, and I want to say this, yeah, because a lot of people have been saying to me about the player shouldn't be bigger than the club, um, player power, etc. Let me tell you lot something, yeah? If you're a manager, if you're looking at a work establishment, yeah, and you've got owners, CEOs, then you've got managers who front up and then you've got employees, yeah? If you don't, your job as a manager is to provide an environment for your employees to want to come to work. Let's just take this in real life terms, yeah? Now, whether you like it or not, yeah, this is how it is. If your employees are not happy with you and you don't have good relationships with them, you make them feel bad or, you, or your, your regime is bad, your office environment is bad, the whole thing is bad. If those employees, and this is just how it is, it's not me saying that it's right or wrong, this is how it is, it's fact. If those employees scream loud enough to the owners of that establishment, the manager is gone. It's as simple as that because it is that manager's job to give a conducive environment for those employees, which are the players, to to want to do their job. Now, these players are not, Pogba and, and Martial and all these players that are playing bad are not saying, I'm not training today. Yeah. I'm not gonna put, don't, you put me in the starting 11, I'm not playing. Yeah. They're not doing that. They're still turning up to work. Yeah, they're, they're just not happy in happy. the environment that they want to work. And if you're not happy in your job, because that's what it is to these players, the job. I know people say fight for the badge and fight for the shirt. But realistically, to a lot of these new players, bruv, it is human, a job. Bruv, they're, they're human beings. beings. Bruv, and emotions, if you've been dug bruv. out, if your manager's dug you out in front of the office in public, if your manager's got someone in to do your job instead of you when you were doing a good job yeah. and then not even bringing you back in, and then when they do bring, if your manager's put someone in your position, if you're in the finance department, yeah, and you get someone from IT to come and run the finance department, yeah, Eric Bailly slash McTominay, that's what he's probably thinking. You're going to think, what's going on? Those are natural things. And when you do play, when you do play, you're either A, not going to be on your game, or B, worried about making a mistake. Yeah, and that's the thing about this whole player up. power thing. It's not player power, it's employee power. This is what happens in the world of work. Brother, and, it's, and that's the thing with McTominay. What a, what a big show of no confidence. For Eric Bailly, who sat on, the bench, sat, on the bench, sat on the bench, but you, you're you going to leave McTominay at centre-back. The whole thing's a shambles. At the end of the day, he has ruined the confidence of too many players at that club. Like, Alexis Sanchez is not a bad player. One, he's playing out of position. And two, he's just playing, like, completely devoid of confidence. Mm. And it's the same for Lindelof. It's the same for Bailly. It's the same for Lingard. It's the same for Rashford. Because Lingard and Rashford both come out saying that they enjoy playing for Gareth Southgate because of the freedom he gives them. Jose don't give him that freedom. Do you know what I mean? How can Jose have eight men behind Martial and then talk about defensive Expecting duties? <laughs> Bruv, that, that is no... I find it so hard to excuse. And I then you expect that. someone like Martial to play with confidence when he's got eight men behind him and he's still not allowed to attack. And you, play, you expect him to play with confidence when you played... Sanchez for nine months, nine months when he's done absolutely nothing, no output. And Martial, I'm not even going to call it a bad game because there's a whole team bad performance. But even in the three games that he's played recently, dug him out. He's, he's dug him out, but he's still done more than Sanchez in nine months. Yep. Like even by beating him. players and making corners and making things happen, he's still done more in his performances, which haven't been complete. I'm not saying his performances have been complete. They haven't. Yeah. But it goes to show the level of that left, with that left side that he's done more in nine months in yeah. three games. Yeah. But this is it. And again, Jose hasn't called him out. Lukaku went nine games without scoring last season and Jose came out and said, yeah, well, Rom knows he's my boy. 
like he's doing what I told him to do, even mm. though he's not scoring. Mm. But then he wants to dig out players like Martial that's actually scoring, actually trying. Mm. That's and, the key there. Just yeah. Try like nobody's playing well. Like yeah. we know this already. So out of the bad bunch and out of the bad performances, you're looking for little things off the ball. What are you like? Are they trying to do something? Are they trying to beat a player? Are they trying to make something happen? Pogba. I don't want to keep going over the same thing, but a lot of fans booed him when he come off. Yeah. You saw it right next to me. We were looking at a guy to our left who was absolutely slating him. Yeah. Well done, get the fuck out of our club. You're yeah. prima donna, you're this, you're that. We saw that Pogba was trying to make things happen. Yeah. He had a bad game, don't get me wrong. He had a bad game and then once his head had gone... I don't think his game was any worse than anyone else's. These exactly. guys in the crowd are your idiots, innit? Like, at the end of the day, Pogba and Martial are actually are two... Are there. Not only are there our two most exciting players, but our two most talented players. Those are the only two players in our team that can make something out of absolutely nothing. You see Pogba's assist for Fred's goal. That's la, a, what, la, such la, an underrated assist. La, last game, the way he took that out of the such air. Such a run with his I weaker mean? foot. He's the only player in the team that can do that. Like, you got to realise that we have two gems there and Mourinho has manipulated the fan base against these guys, bruv. It's pure manipulation, fam. Mm. Do you know what I mean? The same way they tried to do the same thing um, he done the same thing with Hazard at Chelsea. He told everyone that Kevin De Bruyne wasn't good enough and his work ethic's not good enough. This How guy... Wrong was that? Uh, and now what? And, <laughs> and Kevin De Bruyne is running around making sly tackles for Pep. Do you know what I'm saying? So you can't manage these guys. This is a fact. And the thing is, he's turning the fan base on these players and, like, it's not right. You know what I mean? It's not right. And he's doing that to save himself. He doesn't care about the club. He only cares about himself. That's why he only talks about himself. Mm. That is it. So he knows that he's on his way out and he's looking to take a few men with him. He said today in his press conference that he um, is not worried about his job. Um, he is going to say that. Yeah, obviously. Do you think he genuinely is worried or knows that the Grim Reaper is knocking on the door? Mm. Or like, has he, do you think he's got reassurances from the board, from Ed to say, look, do you know what? We're going to back you to the end of the season no matter what. No, he hasn't got reassurance. He has to say that, bruv, because think about it. He wants his money, innit? He wants his payoff. He's not going to say, oh, yeah, like, I think they're going to sack me. Think back to when he said that the other day when he was joking. You see what Manchester I'm United want to sack me. They need much more money. I, I, better for me. That's looking like not a joke anymore. Bruv, he knows that they're going to have to pay him. So he doesn't care. So he's going to go and like he's confident. But it's funny how when, as soon as these Zidane rumours came out, all of a sudden he's playing up for the camera and doing all sorts of other shit. When he done that um, training ground thing with Pogba, them the man are allowed 15 minutes a month, you know, on the training ground like coincidentally, that. And coincidentally, in that one 15 minutes, that's what happened. Right in front of the camera. They got all the buildings. He could have done that inside Karen and he didn't have to do that on the training pitch. He could have spoke to him after he the game spoke, straight away. Like he could have spoke night. to him before training or after training. He didn't have to do it on the pitch in front of the cameras. This mm. guy knew what he was then doing. Then he tried to say it wasn't a confrontation. Yeah. Then he said, bruv, the guy <laughs> knew what he was doing. He's manipulative and he's calculated. Everything he does. I believe that he gave Pogba the armband so we could take it away from him, bruv. Mm. Like, because he's that calculated. The same way he took Sanchez out of the whole squad, just so then he could pull up Martial about it, bruv. Just, he was like, he was almost mm. willing him to do, do badly. But the beautiful thing about it was he took off Pogba and Martial, we scored, and then he thought he was going to come out after the game and say something, then they scored again. Mm. And then that just put egg all over <laughs> his face. It just proves because that. Because he was waiting to, to say, see, I took them two off and then we played better. Mm. No, 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 it didn't work out for him. Everything he does is calculated. The guy, the guy is a vindictive man. Everything he does, he's got an agenda in his head. Mm. And he's always trying to look after number one. And that's why when he was talking to PSG last season, and a lot of you lot got short memories when you're like, no one's bigger than the club. After the guy was flirting with PSG because he wanted a contract extension, like, where's the same energy for that? Like, the same energy is not there. Do you know what I mean? So if you want to keep this, oh, no one's bigger than the club, then neither is he. That's very true. Um, these next games coming up, Valencia and Newcastle. Yeah. Valencia have got off to an awful start in um, La Liga, struggling. Yeah. Um... So, you know, I know we've got off to an awful start as well. So really it's two evenly matched teams, you could yeah. say. But, you know, Spanish teams like to knock the ball about. Yeah. You know, historically Valencia are a good, good side. Newcastle, they've got their own problems and they are struggling. Yeah. If we pick up two wins from these next two games, which there's an argument that you could say, we I should. can't see where our next win's coming from. But realistically, no, we, we, should. we two, should. That's what I'm saying. But, you, but, but on the flip side, you look at how we've been playing at home. We've had Derby at home. We've had Wolves at home. They're, they're games that you look at and think, well, we should be putting these away. And we haven't. But that's what I said. It don't matter home or away. We're playing exactly. crap anyway, bruv. So but with these two games, yeah. if he wins them, yeah. does that put a bit of calm in the, uh, in, in the team? Does that... 
Yeah, because then the next game after that is Chelsea away. No. What, what does, what, what's going to be the feel with, regarding these two games? If we win them, if we lose them. If, if we lose against Valencia, you know, is Jose out? Or what do you think like, would be a knee-jerk thing for the board to go, now we've lost these games or we've won these games, let's calm down. How do you see that coming in the next two games? I think if we don't get six points, he's definitely getting binned in the international break, bruv. I'd bin him anyway. Do you mm. know what I mean? Because he's, yeah, lost <laughs> he's lost the dressing room. He has lost the dressing room. I saw, did you see they were showing distance covered and sprints and that? We're at the bottom, man. We're at the bottom. These men are not running for him no more. You know what I mean? And it's not just the Pogba's and Martial's because he's trying to manipulate the agenda. Mm. It's a lot more players that aren't happy with it. Do you know it. what he said in the press conference today? When they, the, 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 um, the, the reporter said, Joseph, have you seen the stats that you're the lowest? He said, the stats are the stats and the man is the man. That's what he said. Well, there you go. But you could say the man is the man, yeah? But it's men, isn't it? Like, no one's running no more. <laughs> distance cover. Because no one cares now, Maureen. You've got your five guys. Do you know what I'm saying? That's it. That's all you've got. Like, Lindelof and them man ain't checking for Jose. Bae ain't checking for Jose. Do you know what I mean? All the likes of the Herreras, the Matters and all them, man, they love the club, but they're not mm. checking for, man. Like, they're not. I've got, you know, we always have to look at the whole thing. Is there not, like... I know you've made up your mind, so I'm trying to get you, There's which is quite a difficult. Can do to I'm not, no, not going to say that. I'm not going to say that because trying to ask Rance to like, like come out of how what he's made his mind up on is difficult. But I'm going to challenge him. Is there not like a, a bit of like you do need to be careful what you wish for? Like, no. We need to maybe maybe get to January, give Jose transfer funds to to get some more. I know they've made the <laughs> nobody knows. I tried. Signings, I tried. I January tried. signings don't work. So what's the yeah. point in it, bruv? At the end of the day, you know what we got with him. He's dead food. Like get rid, mm. get rid, bruv. Like that's it. I'll rather give Carrick the job till the end of the season rather than keep him till the end of the and season. Just right off the season, and obviously because no, Carrick's never I'll managed before. So. I'll write it off. I'll enjoy going to Old Trafford um, and watching proper football, bruv, because Carrick will get us playing proper football straight away. How do we know? Like, although he's been we a member of the know. club, we do. Is know, that a full gone conclusion that he'll yes, be able to go is. into a training field and put that back into it? Or because he was a teammate last year and went matter. through it, it he'll get matter. that respect. It doesn't matter. All the players need is the freedom to be able to express themselves, bruv. As I said yesterday on the show, you see the goal we scored against Arsenal. The Jesse and Martial link up the little one-touch intricate football. Mm. We have the players to play that. Mm. We just don't have the confidence to play that because the managers sucked so it out. So we've done it in play. little bits and pieces. That was under Mourinho. I can't pick out too much many other, <laughs> too many other performances where we've played that kind of football. Good goals, but if they've shown glimpses, then yeah, is it not, not on the players? Why why can't no, these players do it more him, consistently bro. then? It's all about confidence. You need to have the confidence to know that if you try something and it doesn't come off, you, you're still playing You're not next getting week. hooked, yeah. You know them ones there? You need that as a player, bruv. Ryan Giggs needed the confidence to know because he lost the ball a lot for us. He used to give the ball away the most. All the time. Probably dribbling, more than Sanchez. Dribbling, trying to nutmeg guys, it don't come off, mm. yeah? The manager's not going to be kicking bottles on the side. Mm. Same with Cristiano Ronaldo. Do step over, step over, lose the ball and just know that when you get in at half time, the manager's going to say, keep going, lad, it will come off for you. You attacking players need that. Mm. Do you know what I mean? They need to know that no matter what happens, they got the confidence of the manager. And that's where it comes down to. And like that's why we're attacking saying. players don't do well for this manager because he doesn't instill confidence. He's a coward. Do you know what I mean? And the bigger the risk, the bigger reward in life in general, not just football, bruv. You mm. have to try things for them to come off. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And that, and that is the reason why a lot of people got to know the LVG because we didn't try things. We kept the ball well, but then in the final third, we would play the we safe did, we, pass. We clueless, yeah. We, it was the yeah, safe yeah. pass all the time. It was don't lose the ball, don't lose the ball, don't But lose. the trait was, we had it. But we had it. We and had a lot of teams, ball. yeah, yeah, couldn't, couldn't get off us, but we yeah. just, we couldn't make chances. But this is it. So the fact that these guys are playing scared, mm. that's all it is. Well, I that said that. That factor would go as soon as the manager 100%. Went. I, I said, I don't know what you guys think, Mark had his say. Mark said, no, nah, no, nah, he's definitely progressed us. I said on the show that we done, like, I, I, how many of you can hand on heart say that, that Mourinho has progressed us massively from where we were with Van Gaal? Because realistically, it's a different style, yeah, and almost the same results. They're still pretty poor. We're 10th in the league. Yeah. So realistically, this is our we're not really... This the Premier League season that, since There you go. So Van Gaal didn't even do this, this yeah. bad a start. And this is the same kind of start that Moyes had. And he played flipping Liverpool and Chelsea in, that in, his first, in the first 10 games. So what's, his, what's Jose's excuse? And we played no one. But exactly, we only played Tottenham and At got home. slapped. At <laughs> home. <laughs> so I just think the interesting story is how far are we away from the Van Gaal, from the Moyes? Because we're Mourinho one, was... We're one more loss away from it. <laughs> And even though statistically we're worse already, mm. we're one more loss away from it, brother. We ain't played no one yet. Wait, wait till we have to go to Anfield. Wait till we have to well, go to the Stamford next, Bridge. The next hard game 
Is Stamford Bridge and away? We don't get nothing there. And think anyway. of that. We haven't won there since what 2012, maybe 13, I think. And yeah, we like, don't get nothing at Stamford Bridge. And the way football's set up right now, we're looking to get that absolute pace. That could up. be embarrassing. Like, yeah, I, I, I mean, I, it could be another four nil, bro. Like, oh. if we're, we're playing the way we're playing now, we'll do you, know what I mean? and you know that Jose is gonna park the bus. You know what I mean? Because he has to. That guy's gonna put out five DMs. Mm. You know what I mean? That, that's what's gonna happen. All right, Rance, and you guys at home. The next three games, yeah. Let me, let's just say, <laughs> you got your head back already, you're already thinking, I know what your response is going to be. Beat Valencia, yep. beat Newcastle, which meant we should. To them meant, to beat, meant to beat them both. Yep. We come back after the national break. Yeah. And we he's do, still there. Well, no, like, we, we, and he's still there, yeah? Yeah. And we beat Chelsea, yeah. something we haven't done in ages. And yeah. we beat them, I'm not going to say convincingly, but we beat them. Yeah. And then we go on a little run. Yeah. Just, just imagine that. Yeah. What's, what, what, what happens then? Yeah, then, then pigs will be flying, bro. <laughs> I tried before the show. Someone said to me, "Oh, why don't you guys try and do a show on positivity? Why don't you?" And I said, "Okay, yeah, let's do a positive show rants about our current league position, our messed up board, our square pegs in round holes, our players not playing for the manager, our manager digging." Out. Let's do a positive show on that. Well, let's just do a show about where we reminisce and talk about when we took Van Persie from from Arsenal and he scored 30 odd goals and won us the league. Or let's talk about the treble in 1999. Yeah. We could do shows like that for you all day. Let me tell you guys something, yeah. We don't come on here, and you, to be fair, I don't even really, shouldn't really be justifying to you, but we don't come on here to spread ne negative vibes. These shows will only ever be a reflection of what's going on at the club. Absolutely. If the club were playing good football and we were top of the league, we'll be coming on here. If this was a, if this was a Liverpool channel or a Man City channel or a Chelsea channel, we'll be coming on here saying, God, weren't Hazard brilliant, man. I mean, he goes from strength to strength. We're not seeing that. So how do you expect us to talk about anything different? And the manager's not moving like that either. There you, you know go. I mean? so, so if the geezer at the top is not showing that kind of enthusiasm and like trying to galvanise us, then what the hell do you expect, bruv? You've got to be deluded. <laughs> exactly. Deluded. Maybe you just love Man United so much that you that, that, that it pains you too much to actually face reality. Because the the, like, there's no shame in admitting the reality and questioning no, it and talking cool. about it and embracing it to a certain extent because by embracing it, you then spark the initiation of change. Like I'm not saying that by us talking about this, Ed Wood was going to listen and make changes, but when all the fans as a collective group start voicing their opinion about how not how things shouldn't be done and how bad things are then it starts to it starts to filter through it does you know and i'm not saying you know we want to become the new club that keeps slating the manager and sh it's not about that it's about saying purely what's in front of you and we're not happy with what Bro, we're seeing in pre-season if jose came out and he said listen we're Manchester United. I want a centre back, but even if we don't get one, we've got enough quality at this club. Do you know what I mean? To mount a serious challenge. We would have, I would have backed him. Yeah. I would have said, you know what? He's come out and he said the right things. The mm. guy come out, he was spreading negativity from day dot. Before we kicked the ball. Before we kicked the ball, he was like, I want a centre back. I can't get one. And if we don't get one, it's going to be a difficult season. If we don't get one, season. it's going to be a difficult season. Just like he said, when I saw Jones stepping up here, I knew we were doomed. Jones and Bailly. What kind of manager says that? What confidence does that instill in Phil Jones and Eric Bailly? What kind of confidence does that instill in any of your centre halves when you're saying we need a centre half or we are fucked? All the centre backs are looking around like, hold on, bruv. So what? He don't rate us. Yeah, we're not good but enough. bro, you bought us. <laughs> You How can you argue with that? And this is these are the things like Rance does speak pure facts, and it's not about me just agreeing with everything Rance says because I don't. Like sometimes I do challenge him on things where he's dead certain Zidane, and I'm saying, you know, but how do you know his, his record, etc.? And that's where the difference of opinion comes in. But there's certain things you can't argue with. You can't, and that's what I think is 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 the biggest bugbear with Man United fans at the moment is what he's doing now. Even people who were Jose in before, they're like, nah, mate. Do you know what? It's inexcusable. How can you? How 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 can you actually physically? What all of these players are dead now? <laughs> what, 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 what they're all not good it? enough. So fam, the man that you bought, fam, you bought. And that's the thing in it. It's just it doesn't instill confidence in the players. And that's the thing that's inexcusable, man. I mean, I I, I don't like to come on camera after each week and rant and and do that whole thing. It's not really me, but. The last two games, man, I've had to just call it as it is. Like you, you can't, you can't defend it. You can't defend it. But listen, it's been a long show today. Um, a lot longer than usual. Yeah. About 15 minutes longer than usual. But yeah. we needed it, man. Like you needed to rent. I need to defend. There's a lot there's to talk been, about. There's been a few games in it. So yeah, there's been a yeah. few games since the last one. So mm. like, it had to be done, man. You guys have just been fantastic. Um, 
that's what we're here to do, man. Like, we're just regular Man United fans like you, like everyone else around the world, and we just want the best for the club and we're just fed up of what we're seeing. And that, that is just echoed around a lot of the fan base. There's still a lot of people who want Mourinho in. Each to their own, each to their own. I don't know about a lot, but there... <laughs> yeah, maybe yeah, not a lot. There, there, <laughs> are, there are still people that um, do want Mourinho in, and that's mm. fine. Mm. You know what I mean? That's fine. At the end of the day, like, everyone's entitled to their own opinion, but, like, I base my opinion on facts, innit? And the facts are... He's not getting the best out of the team that we have. The facts are the players aren't playing for him. The facts are the football's crap. The facts are we're 10th in the league. And the facts are we're looking like we're not going to win anything. I just deal in facts, isn't it? It's a lot of facts there. Again, how can you argue with facts? Guys, drop your views in the comments um, in the boxes below of everything we've spoken about today. We've spoken about Zidane, like, is there guarantees with that? We've spoken about the players, the player power aspect of it. Is that right? Is that wrong? We've talking about, obviously, we've spoke about Jose Marino. We've touched on the board and director of footballs, what order way, what way round we do it. We've touched on the games coming up. If we win these games, what does it mean for Jose? What does it mean for United? Can we win these games? We spoke about it a lot, and that's what we do every week here on the Flex Around Show. Guys, keep your support, keep your comments coming in. Get ours on Twitter, I'm FlexUTD on Twitter. Twitter and Instagram as usual. At Rents and Bents on Twitter and Instagram. Add them both up. Keep it interactive. Obviously, we both get back to... Yeah, we interact, man. We interact, man. As long as, yeah, you know I mean, it's constructive, guys. Yeah, like, you'll hear from us. Yeah, and if you don't agree with us, that's not, we're not going to not get back to you as well. Like, it's a difference of opinion, as long as you're not rude. I don't like that. And follow the United Stand on all the socials, United Stand TV as well, on Instagram. Get at Sophie as well, at Sofrico. Because the team's doing well, you know? Well, not that, not that team. Not, not, not Manchester United. <laughs> the United Stand. Guys, we're going to be back at the same time, same place next week.